Okay. Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the North Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our show again this week. And we're especially happy to have people like you in our audience, people who are interested in the issues that are going on in our cities. If you haven't watched our show before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area and learn about what are some of the programs, statutes, issues that that city has been dealing with and will be in the future. And then we always encourage you, if it's your city or even if it's not, if it's an issue that concerns you, jot down the phone number and the email of the person talking so that you can be in contact with them, particularly if it's your mayor and your city council person. Now tonight, we're very happy to welcome Regan Murphy from Robbinsdale, the mayor of Robbinsdale. Glad to be here. Thanks right. for inviting me. Yeah, I'm glad to have you back again. And to fill us in on kind of what's happening in Robbinsdale. Now, I had asked you to think about what are some of the issues that have created the biggest amount of citizen response <laughs> over the last few years? Sure. So I would say the, the biggest thing over the course of uh, me being mayor is anything that involves change. Ah, right. Um, brings a pretty big response. Uh -huh. um, some positive, some negative. Right. But it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's um, trying to educate residents oh. on you know, what's taking place, give them as much information as possible. Right. Sometimes that, that's hard to do. Uh -huh. And of course, uh, mix in social media into that and things can um, get distorted and changed and a lot of opinions floating around. But um, I think you know, redevelopment uh -huh. um, gets a lot of response or you know, any large public works projects. Sure. Uh, then you've learned a lot about dealing with people, right? Oh, it's, I, I think I mentioned before, I'll, I'll eventually be writing a book and that'll definitely be uh, one chapter. Yeah. Is, <laughs> right, right. Is, is well, and you have a lot of people in Robbinsdale that are savvy and use the social internet. Yeah, social media. Uh, media. Yeah, it's kind of uh, good and bad, right? It, it allows us to connect with residents and um, businesses and just anyone that's interested in the city uh, a lot more. Mm -hmm. The connectivity is great. Uh, at the same time, it also allows, um, you know, numerous opinions and right. um, some things that aren't always facts, and you yeah, know, that's so it kind of be a distraction. Right. So it's kind of good and bad, but it is. It's Learn there to, to deal with it, right? You do, <laughs> and you just try to stay positive and and get the right information out there as best you can. Oh yes. And I, I do. I do enjoy using it as a tool because it's just a great way to get information out. Uh, you know, better than in the past. Oh yeah, I, I can see that a lot more people are being reached, or even people just watching meetings on the, on uh, cable. Oh, without a doubt, um, with Northwest, right? Um, we're able to you know stream or residents or anybody's able to right. stream the the meetings uh, anytime, so they don't have to come down the city hall or have to watch it at the exact time that the meeting right. ha happens. So, the the access for residents uh, information is critical and it, it is beneficial. Mm -hmm. Then I thought we'd start off talking about your downtown area mm -hmm. because your downtown area is one that many different suburbs are trying to duplicate. Right. And you have a real downtown because it comes from how, how many years? How old is Robbinsdale? Well, it was uh, founded or started as a city uh, in 1893. Ah. And we just had our 125th anniversary wow. recently. So a nice celebration. So it's been around a long time, but there's been a lot of changes in the downtown area. Yes, and I thought that's what we kind of talk about over, well, say over the time you've been on the city council. Sure. Well, it's interesting. I think over the years, you know, every mayor and council has kind of contributed in different uh -huh. ways. And uh, the council kind of before me um, spent a lot of time wisely uh, and financial resources to kind of um, redo um, the main street landscape, uh -huh. both trees, sidewalks, and just kind of um, bring it up a notch. There's the plaza right. and the fountain plaza right, down there. Right. And just kind of really set the stage uh -huh. for uh, where we're at today. So that's been great. And now, um, you know, we've got an amazing city council. We're all on the same page. We uh -huh. kind of, uh, a shared vision. And a smaller city like Robbinsdale, we're able to be a little bit more nimble. Oh, right. To work with businesses. Right. To help them be successful and, and you know, maybe change the ordinance mm -hmm. to accommodate their business. Yeah. So a lot of those things, um, you know, I don't want to give out too many secrets right. about <laughs> our, our success, but 
uh, certainly the, the the stage was set for us to do that. You mentioned, you know, kind of a, a real downtown. Or, right. Well, it is. It's authentic. And uh -huh. that's that's something that's really hard to reproduce. Right. We've got kind of this downtown area that has this the walkability and, you know, that kind of human factor where mm -hmm. you can look across the street and, and still talk to somebody. Right. You can still look across the street and see in the windows of the stores. Uh -huh. So that, that kind of human scale, uh, you know, makes it for a, a better experience. Oh, but, yeah. But it's not only that, the scale, it's also the different businesses we have. Uh -huh. And many of which are, um, the buildings are owned and occupied by the business owner. Uh -huh. Many of which live in Robbinsdale. Right. So again, that experience for uh, people, I think they really enjoy knowing that they can you know, spend money and support a business and knowing um, the owner mm -hmm. and the people that work there and that they're supporting them. And, and then some of the businesses in Robbinsdale's downtown area go back many, many years too. Yeah, I'd say that probably our, our longest anchor is Hacky Mueller's. Yep. It's <laughs> That's been, who I was thinking of. <laughs> yep. It's been there. And, you know, that anchor was important for us as we expanded and kind of grew our, our downtown. And, of course, well, that's bakery. It was Bronze Bakery. And uh, uh -huh. it's been a bakery a long time. And um, so they've been there. And then the hardware store has been a great anchor. Right. And I was recently uh, uh, went to another family, the Wellnas, who run the hardware store now and actually moved to Robbinsdale. And uh, so, yeah, it's been, um, it's, it's been a lot of fun, you know, for a number of years. It was pretty quiet in Robbinsdale. Uh -huh. uh, you could walk down on a Friday, Saturday night and hear crickets. <laughs> uh, but now if you go down on a Friday or Saturday yeah. night or just about any night of the week, uh, there's a lot of activity. So what are some of the, of the businesses that have come in over the last five to eight years? Yep, so um, probably the biggest one in the old TCF Bank building was, was Wicked Wart. Oh, was one right, of the breweries. right. And uh, certainly a successful one, also Travail, uh -huh. which has you know expanded. Oh, right. They're building a new uh, restaurant right now. They've got Pig Ate My Pizza mm -hmm. uh, in their brewery, which has been phenomenal. Um, Marna's Cafe, uh, they're getting ready to expand. Ah. Um, we have uh, Golden Age Design, which they refurbish on kind of old Danish uh, style furniture. Right. And uh, we've got a Lions Gym, which went in the old bowling alley. Uh, and that's run by a, a fantastic couple. It's, it's a great asset to our downtown area. So we've got this great mix of all these right, different businesses. Right. And con what's great now is, you know, we spent a number of years kind of going out and trying to attract different businesses and re recruit, really. Right. And, you know, n now we, we really don't have any vacancy. Ah. And we have businesses that, you know, are coming to us looking for, you know, a place to be right. in Robbinsdale. And so it's kind of, it's, it's frustrating because we don't have uh, yeah. space for them, but uh, we're going to continue to work on that and try to expand on our downtown area. And of course, Hy-Vee, I got to mention oh, Hy-Vee. Yeah, That's right, great. was, uh, was a, a great um, addition to Robbinsdale. Just, I, I mean, a grocery store, it's beyond just being, having a place to go buy groceries, right? It's, it's a hub for the community. It's somewhere where everybody go to, goes oh, to right. on a weekly basis. Right. And not only that, but just the business itself, High V, is just a fantastic sponsor. So many things in our community. Oh, they uh, just, are They're good. a great partner. Mm -hmm. And the number of jobs that they provide to, it's just, it's just been a fantastic addition um, to Robinsdale, really a catalyst for other development. Oh, right, because you're, now you're going to start a, a apartment complex right across the street from them, yeah, up then, the road a little bit. Yeah, both. So we have, so we have two uh, developments. One is Birdtown Flats, which is under construction uh -huh. right now. And they have a move-in date for kind of their phase one in January. Uh -huh. And then um, in, later on in the spring, they'll uh, open up more units. And that's going to be market rate. We haven't had market rate uh, apartments in Robbinsdale. Uh -huh. um, gosh, we haven't had any new apartments for well over 20 uh -huh. years. So that's going to be a great addition. And then, right. as you mentioned, across from hy V, it's going to be another um, apartment building. Uh, same thing, great amenities, and so it would be great to welcome some new oh, residents right. to Robbinsdale. Right. Now, all of this kind of started out where the city council and staff were working with an, a group, but I don't remember their name. Um, so ULI, Urban Land Institute. Oh, yes, yes. Um, it's just, I, I think a lot of cities work with them. Uh -huh. they, they have a lot of resources for municipalities to, um, to come up with new ideas and, and um, get assistance in various um, things and that that meeting was was critical because we kind of got to a point with um, our 
um, city council, we all kind of knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know how to take that first ah, step. Right, right. And so we had a round table um, with a number of different individuals that allowed us just to kind of pepper questions yeah. and figure out what is what it, what do we need to do. And so we developed a strategy and we just started executing it. Ah. And it's been uh, wildly successful. And um, again, the council um, being on the same page and kind of having the, a similar vision. Right. And knowing what our asset with our downtown, uh, we've been able to really um, get things done. Well, and, and your downtown has become, I'm trying to think of the term that they use, a destination point. Yes, happening. That, and that's like what everybody is striving for, right? No, no definitely. Uh, you obviously want to bring people in, uh, into your city. You want your business to be successful yes, so yes. they stick around and you have that stability. And you want, um, you know, you want people to, to move to Rob, Robinsdale or any yeah. city and, and want to stay. And what's been great for Robinsdale as, as we've grown over the last few years is, is I think the perception of Robinsdale has changed, uh -huh. which is quite frankly the main reason why I decided to run for mayor is, you know, I, I, I'm a Robinsdale kid. Uh -huh. right? Folks grew up in Robinsdale and I knew it was a great place to live, right. but I, you know, that perception was, was different from oh, people yeah. outside of Robinsdale. So I think uh, we've done a great job in changing that. Um, oh, I think you have. And we've had a strategy too to kind of um, change that. And so what's great now is that people want to move to Robinsdale. Businesses want to come to Robinsdale. And I mean, you, I mean, you can't ask for anything more than that. Yeah, you've had a whole turnover of age groups that are coming and in interested in your cities, right? Yeah, it's definitely changed. Um, from 2000 till um, till now, uh -huh. and I, I think it happens with a lot of entering suburbs and right. with the, kind of the crash of 2007, uh -huh. 2008. Um, there, we had affordable housing. We were close right. to jobs in in the suburbs in downtown Minneapolis, and I think people uh, kind of by accident in some cases discovered Robinsdale yeah. for those reasons. <laughs> right, and um, so. You know, it was kind of a, a bad time, but um, ended up being a, a good thing for Robinsdale in that in that sense. But um, yeah, it's been well, and it does take a long time if there's a certain perception of a city. Mm -hmm. You have to work at it for a while before people make change. People change how they think about it. Yeah, it takes years. Yeah, you know, without a doubt. And there's so many different facets. There's, you know, there's there's younger people, there's um, older people, mm -hmm. different age groups that have. You know different interests right. there's, so there's just so many different angles that you have to work so it's it does take a lot of time so and then that's a good point where you talked about your city council working well together mm -hmm. but also to have different oh, come from different backgrounds oh uh, absolutely so you know we have two attorneys uh -huh. uh, one private practice one uh, works for Hennepin County um, I, I'm in sales um, and then you know George he's kind of um, he's also in sales you know he's a business owner right. And then um, Councilmember Pat Backen is has an IT background, so we oh. kind of all right. bring something different right. to the table, and we all have kind of different interests and focuses. But uh, at the end of the day, we know we we all want what's best for Robinsdale. So oh, right. we we kind of slide into these different roles and um, very supportive of each other. And the changes that have happened in your downtown area were done to a plan that you put together. Correct. And we're, I mean, you so you have to start out with knowing where are you aiming towards. Right, and it was you, you know you kind of start big, right? Right. And you know part of our vision was looking at West Broadway as kind of a bookshelf, mm -hmm. and with our established downtown as one end and 36th and France the other end, uh -huh. um, and we needed an anchor down there, and that's where Hy-Vee right. came in. Right. And so our goal is to you know kind of get these two anchors and then work toward the middle sure. to uh, continue redevelopment and and. Um, you know, both retail, restaurants, and um, you know, some high density living, but and th and that's the appropriate place for it. We want to preserve uh -huh. our you know bedroom community and our single family oh, homes. Right, right. And so this is the an, kind of a natural area for more high density. Mm -hmm. And n not only that, you know, kind of bookshelf vision, but that you know you couple that with the potential for light rail. Oh, right, right. And so that's yeah, it, it's a long process and it evolves. But um, you know we're looking at um, zoning and kind of those mm -hmm. changes too. So from a very basic level all the way up to you know kind of pie in the skies. Right. 
So, but it sounds uh, you're doing a good job. No, I appreciate looking that. Looking at it's it from the outside, that's I for sure. I appreciate that. Now, you're getting started on your budget for 2028? We are. Or where, maybe you can tell us about the beginning stages, what happens. Yep, so um, every municipality in Hennepin County has to have their preliminary budget to them by September 30th. Right. And so on uh, September 8th, uh, we uh, voted our preliminary budget to send to the county. Right. And then we'll have uh, several other work sessions to get things dialed in because we can lower the levy <laughs> of what we established. We cannot increase it. And then in December, we will set our final levy for the following year. So what will the range, be, where will the levy come in December? What will the range be? Because um, you haven't got it there yet. Yeah, so our preliminary budget, the, the levy that we set is, uh, it's, it was 5.35% mm -hmm. increase. So for our final levy, we can do that or below. Right. We cannot go above that. So now we just kind of get dialed, things dialed in. Um, we don't have any major projects, uh -huh. in, you know, as far as, you know, big public work buildings or purchases of a um, fire truck, which we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, really, it comes down to maintaining our city services, uh, maintaining our, our wages so they're competitive oh, to retain right. Right. top talent and also recruit top talent. Um, th that's one of the things that, you know, residents um, expect and kind of demand is, oh, right. is is good staff. And, you know, if we're going to do that, uh, we have to provide wages that are, Definitely. you know, fair, equitable, and, you know, at market. So there, there's part of that. We've had some catching up to do. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the budget. Um, and then adding uh, a police officer position and then an IT position within the city um, because of all the digital things that um, they continue to increase. And we have one person in IT right now oh. to deal with 80 employees, our police and fire oh, department. Wow. We now have police cameras. Uh -huh. So that uh -huh. uh, data retention and um, requires a lot of um, people power. So oh, right. those are kind of the highlights of the budget. Uh, we, we, again, we try as a city to, to you know, keep it as, as you know, minimal increase as possible. Right. Because uh, we understand people on fixed budgets and, and whatnot. Um, but at the same time, we gotta we gotta make sure that we we don't get um, ha have to play catch up again. You know, oh, so you get, right, get in this right, roller coaster right. where you know you, you don't raise taxes, and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, you, you have to raise taxes, and you're looking at ten percent. Right. And so we try to kind of keep it real even from year to year. Oh, and it, it's a challenge. It takes uh, a lot of meetings and discussions. And it is. It, it, you get it, away in balance. Yep, yeah, it is a lot of meetings, and uh, that's one of those things where you know residents. You know, they, they elected us and they kind of right. trust that we're going to work on their behalf, and, and we do. We don't say yes to everything. And, you know, city staff kind of knows that um, our, our goal is, you know, not, not to raise taxes. So whatever it is that comes in front of us, um, you know, it has to be vetted and, and um, have to, has to make sense. Right. So. So you'll have a number of budget meetings between now and December to yep. finalize it all. Then there'll be a copy of that on the city website, right? Yes. Um, our staff has done a phenomenal job. We've, we've got a newer website that was launched a few years ago. Uh -huh. Our search function is phenomenal. So, I mean, you're able to, whether it's chicken permits or, you know, anything financial, budgets, um, you can search for that. You can find it on our website. There's a hard copy sitting right at the front counter uh -huh. at City Hall. And anything like that, um, if you want access to, uh, contact somebody at City Hall and they right. will help you find it. So that, that, that it's easily available for the person that has the interest. Not yep. everybody does. Not everybody does. I, yep, some people are not in the numbers. And, and you know, if it's not nothing crazy, it's right. not worried. <laughs> but some people are very much in the right, numbers. Right, right. So, so. so you have to provide for both groups. Yep, yep. Transparency in government, right? <laughs> yes, uh, that is key. It's key. Over the last, oh, say, five, ten years, what has been happening in regards to your levy? Has it been pretty much the same, down in the same category, or? It, yeah, it really hasn't fluctuated that much. Uh -huh. um, you know, part of the change, you know, our city relies primarily on property taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. We don't have a huge commercial or industrial base. Right. Um, you know, no Fortune 500 companies in Robbinsville. 
Uh, we do rely on local government aid, uh -huh. which uh, you never know. It changes oh, from year right. to year depending on you know, the governor and the, the legislature. And then uh, fiscal disparities is another component that um, can affect us. So, sure. you know, it's my personal opinion. We try not to rely on, you know, the, the government aid um, as, you know, a fixed piece of our budget. Ah, right, for ongoing. Right, because you know, things can change. Uh, but it, at the same time, it is critical for oh. us. It's a substantial part of our budget. And... Um, but over the last few years, you know, the LGA has stabilized a little bit. Fiscal disparities, excuse me, disparities has stabilized. And our levy has been right anywhere from 3 to 6%. Right, right in that ballpark. Yep, yep. Yeah, you get too much higher and you get a lot of excited people. <laughs> you do, and yeah, yeah, and you have to, you know, our and debt. And you, you have to back up why you're doing what you're doing. Correct. And a debt is another big component of our budget in, in managing that. We, uh, but we have a a great rating mm -hmm. which allows us oh, great that interest makes rates a big difference. and um, we have a fantastic um, finance director and they they do a great job and so we're, we're we're in a position that's we're very financially stable and healthy sure. and then we always encourage you if it's your city or even if it's not if it's an issue that concerns you jot down the phone number and the email of the person talking so that you can be in contact with them particularly if it's your mayor and your city council person now let's switch gears and talk a little bit about light rail transit because mm -hmm. there's come that comes up all the time in yeah. the newspapers yep. and whatever and it's been doing that for the last i don't know how many years <laughs> a oh. long time um, so 10 plus. Let's, and yeah. Robbinsdale's part of it. Mm -hmm. The blue line, yep. formerly the Botno line. I don't know what if was anything else before that, but maybe you can update us a little bit on what's happening in that regard. Sure. Um, Lonnie, I can't think, uh, as long as I've been mayor, that there's ever been a public transportation project like this that has had so much support from one end of the line to the other. Right, right. From Minneapolis, Golden Valley, Robbinsville, Crystal, Brooklyn Center, which is, it doesn't even go through. New Hope's on, on board, and of course, Brooklyn Park. Right. And all the mayors, the city council, um, the local businesses, numerous other organizations are ready to go. Right. Unfortunately, uh, there, there's a you know, willing partner um, in the railroad that uh -huh. we need. And so that uh, is kind of where we're at right now. We've got 90% of engineering done. Uh, it's a very, um, it's, it's a route that we are, are um, decided that uh -huh. this is the best option. Right. It makes sense being in the rail corridor and not taking homes. Um, whether or not it, it coexists with light rail, or excuse me, freight rail, um, or if, if it's just light rail and a bike path, that, you know, there's lots of things that could happen, but oh, right. it's we need to negotiate with the railroad, and uh -huh. um, and, and that's that's just something that we're gonna have to keep working on. Right. To be quite frank, and you know what's interesting is all the cities we've we've actually banded to kind of create another coalition. Like uh -huh. this is how how much we are uh, vested. Oh, right. Right. So we've you know put a lot of time and resources into planning, and then we have other public works projects that have uh, all the different municipalities have kind of put on hold sure. waiting you know to see if this happens or not so there's there's a lot of momentum and uh, we're not letting up there's right. probably haven't heard a lot in the news or seen as much things have um, have slowed down a little bit but uh, we we still meet um, weekly and monthly uh -huh. and we've got a new chair for the Met Council uh -huh. that um, has been out and toured and is is motivated and ready to help so we're gonna keep pushing, keep trying. Well, and, and the, the Southwest thing is finally moving forward, so that had to come first, right? Well, or maybe and, yes and maybe no, I don't know. Yeah, we had a, a former governor that felt that way. Yeah. And, you know, there's still a lot of issues with that line, which is ironic because, you know, we're kind of sitting you can here- just do it. <laughs> waiting to go, but uh, it is what it is. That, right. that line is moving forward and I, I think, uh, it, that is good for the mm -hmm. blue line. I think from the standpoint of the federal government, um, seeing the, the, the progress and the potential for growth uh, for the entire system is, is good. And um, it's, it's, 
it's nice that it's kind of uh, started to go on its way and then we can kind of focus on yeah. the blue line. So, so, so it, it's in a negotiating pattern. It's, yep, that's where we're at right now and it's, it's, it's frustrating, but uh, you know, you, you, you do what you can. Yep. And, well, and, and this process has had a tremendous amount of public input. Yep. I mean, the oh. people above and beyond anything yep. that you probably watched before. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And, and it's been, uh, you know, a lot of that public input has had a significant influence on the design, on the project, and will continue to do so. We've got some additional meetings coming up. Um, that is going to involve some citizen input, so it's it's not it's not done yet. There's right, lots more to right. do. Right. So it, it's it's there, and there isn't a lot for people to do, but just keep your eyes on yep, it. Yeah, hang tight. We're still working on it, right. and um, we're not letting off the gas pedal yet. So, and and it's such a need for the Twin Cities area to have a good rapid transit system. It is. I'm not going to lie. Uh, initially, when it was proposed, I was not a fan. Uh -huh. um, but once I kind of got into the weeds a little bit and the details and realized, uh, looking at the growth of the metropolitan area and um, you know, the, the need for transportation and the benefits that it has, um, I would, I would, you know, I'm all in. It's, it's something that we right. need, it makes sense. And uh, it you know, doesn't mean we're not gonna use cars and right. roads, right. but uh, we need to have another component that's gonna you know, move people and um, we're not going to be building more roads in the 394, no. <laughs> 694 loop. No, I don't think so. You know, any more interstates. So we got to find something that's, um, you know, An we can move more people. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. You, you, and it, it, is, it is hard to do life cycle housing, I think they use the term. Yeah. It, so so yeah. you've got something you can afford to move into and you can move up to and then you can move down to. And yeah, especially in a s city that's 2.2 square miles and has been fully developed since 1975. Right. Right. So it, it's, it's definitely a challenge. So when we, we have opportunities like this, we, we're, uh, we're take glad it, to Take advantage yes, of them. Yep, right. For sure. But it, but it is an important one for our society as a whole. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I think the Minneapolis-St. Paul population um, is going to almost double in the next 20-some years. Yeah. So it's, you know, we, we need to have options. Right. Well, I want to thank you very much well, for sharing Absolutely. your time and your experience with our audience out there. And we'll encourage you to tune in next week for part two on Robbinsdale's issues. And then remember, if any of these issues resonated with you and you're a Robbinsdale resident, go ahead and contact Absolutely. the mayor. And if, it, if you're from another city, call your mayor or your city council people and see what they're doing on that issue. We're glad that you've been with us and we'll hope to see you again next week. Bye.